Hi everybody and welcome to the second and final video in the How to Read AI Audio Papers Like a Rockstar mini series. This time I'm going to touch upon a bunch of different topics, but mainly I want to give you an effective strategy to filter out papers and only focus on the papers that are the most promising. But I also want to uh, provide you with a bunch of venues where you can find interesting papers in AI audio and AI music. And finally, I want to share uh, a little bit of my workflow when I read uh, papers and I organize like my references and stuff like that. So let's get started. And the first thing that I want to do is just remind you about what we did last time. And in the previous video, I introduced my personal strategy to read papers effectively. And if you remember, that strategy was a multi-step uh, approach with four different steps. So initially, you just go through a paper, you skim it, then you read the details and you fill in everything until you get to the code. But now, that we have a good strategy for reading papers, uh, there is like a big problem. There's a big elephant in the room, which is uh, every week you have a gazillion papers that get published or get just like shared by the AI audio, AI music community. So it's difficult really like just to focus on uh, the papers that are the most interesting. So one thing that happens to me all the time is I start reading a paper and in, this, in that time frame, while I'm reading that paper, another paper that I'm super interesting, interested in comes out and I just want to shift my attention towards that. Well, all of this to say that it's important to have a strategy that allows you to filter the noise and focus on the most promising papers. And over time, I've developed a few heuristics that I use to decide whether to spend time reading a paper or just like move to the next one. So let me show you like some of these heuristics. So should you read a paper? Well, the first question uh, that you should or the first heuristic that you should use or that at least like I use is uh, related to the code. So I always ask myself, is the code for this paper available? Now, uh, back in the day, five years, 10 years ago, it wasn't that common for papers to come up, uh, to come out also with code. But today, uh, really, like this is almost a given. If you, are, if you have a paper where you present a new system, a new algorithm, a new deep learning architecture, it is expected for you to also publish the code. And so this is for me, a very important filter. So I only tend to uh, read papers which come up with uh, code. And you may be wondering, but how do I know if uh, a paper comes up with code, comes out with code? Well, there's a fantastic website that's called Papers with Code that you can use for that. And it has all sorts of papers in AI, in general, and I guess like image processing, audio processing. So let me show you how this works uh, like real quick. So here we are in purpose with code. And as you can see here, you have, uh, it's just like a wall of uh, papers and uh, probably here you just get the abstract and here you have like the, the paper itself. So the PDF version and the code, which is probably connected to a link on a GitHub uh, repo. Now you also have a search function so you can search like for stuff that you are um, the most interested in. So for example, say generative music. Uh, like this, and then you'll get like all the papers in generative music. And here, for example, we have like the super interesting jukebox paper that by the way, I'm gonna uh, cover at some point in the future. Okay, so let me just get back to, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the presentation here. Okay, so as I said, like code uh, is a very important uh, part of a paper and of an AI audio, AI music paper. So. I mean, if you have codes, then uh, that's probably like a good candidate and I'll just move on to the second heuristic, but otherwise most of the time I'll just like say, okay, yeah, I'm just passing this uh, paper. Okay, so the second heuristic that I use uh, can be encapsulated with this question, which is do the authors offer an evaluation of the proposed solution? So what I do is I just 
quickly skim through the paper and I try to find whether there's a section, uh, an evaluation section or an experiment section. And the reason why I do that is because I really don't care that much about the method itself if it's not um, evaluated, if it's not validated. So I, um, when I read a paper, I expect uh, that if a system has been proposed, it has also been evaluated. And so for me, so if there's no evaluation in a paper, that for me is a no-go. So most of the time, uh, I wouldn't really like spend time reading a paper. Now, obviously this is true for papers where you uh, present a new uh, systems or algorithms, but if you, uh, if you have like a position paper or you are just like making an argument, making a point or a philosophical point, well, there you don't really need uh, evaluation. So that heuristic doesn't apply. Okay, so moving on to the third heuristic. So this is a thing that may be silly, so and that has to do with formatting. So I ask myself, is the paper well formatted? So just go through the paper and see if the layout is okay and the formatting is good. So you may be wondering, but why do you do that? Well, the point is that uh, this formatting and layout for me uh, is a kind of, uh, is a pointer to the amount of uh, commitments that the author put into uh, the paper itself. And the point is like, if you as an author don't spend time polishing your paper and presenting it in a nice uh, way, I really don't know why I should spend time uh, reading your paper. And the reason being that uh, my assumption is that you, you just don't care. And if you don't care, why should I care? Okay, so moving on to the fourth heuristic. So what I also, ask is, is the paper published in a reputable uh, venue? So if the paper is published somewhere, for example, at a conference or in a journal, so is that conference like reputable? Is that journal reputable? And this is like a something that like used to be very important back in the day, like five, 10 years ago, but right now is a little bit less so because there's a lot of like um, papers that get shared before publication and we'll see where you can find those like in a while. But, but still, like if a paper has been published somewhere, you should always ask, is this article, uh, well, uh, is this uh, journal or is this conference like good? Is it of high quality? And so that, is another way of like filtering out papers. Then moving along with the next heuristic. So this is like something that I spent a lot of time, I mean like a lot of like thought on. So what I do is I just go through, um, yeah, the paper, I go to the bibliography and I just like check the references. And if I'm familiar with the uh, domain, with the area, what I do is I just like look for references that are very important and see like if they're present in the bibliography. If that's the case, then it means that the authors have probably done like uh, their homework. And um, otherwise, I mean, uh, I'm not really confident like in reading like that, that, that paper because papers are only as good as their references in the sense that they built on top of other researchers work. And so you expect for papers to reference very good, like other good works. And if that's missing, then that probably means that, uh, I mean, like the study of the art wasn't really reviewed by the authors. And so probably like the, the paper itself isn't, that great. Now, I have to say that none of these heuristics is an absolute. Uh, they all have to be taken with a with a pinch of salt, and there's a lot of like situations where you have to be uh, flexible. But this, at least in my case, give me a way of like deciding whether to spend time reading a paper or not. And as I said, the problem in today's world is that you have so many no so much noise, so many papers coming out every day that it's difficult to. Uh, keep uh, up to date with all of the news out there. So I use this as heuristics to just like cut out like the, the noise. The second thing that I want to cover in this video is where can you find AI audio music papers? Now there are a bunch of different venues. So let's start with the first one. And here I've listed a few conferences that I think like are very important if you want to uh, just like find good papers in the space. 
So the first one, Izmir, is the main conference in music information retrieval. It's been going for 20 plus years. And the great thing is that you can go uh, on its website and find all the proceedings for 20 plus years like worth of paper. So it's, it's a great resource. Now, these other two conferences, so CSMC and uh, MUMI, are about um, generative music specifically. So CSMC is a conference, a conference that I co-founded in 2016, and uh, its name, its extended name is Conference on Computer Simulation of Musical Creativity, and MUMI is a music meta creation workshop. So both of these are focused on generative music. They're great. And the great thing is that this year we have a joint CSMC MUMI conference. Again, if you want to check the proceedings, they are all a bit freely avail available so you can check them out. Now, if you're not really that interested in AI music, but more interested in AI audio or sound in general, so you should definitely check out uh, iCusp. And so this is the conf uh, this is like the main conference on uh, signal processing and its extended name is International Conference on Acoustic Speech and signal processing. So this is the kind of like the main point of reference for speech processing, speech recognition, and all this kind of things. Okay, so this is for the conferences. Then you also have journals and in a music um, information retrieval and in generative music, you have a couple of very important um, um, journals. So the first one is Journal of Creative Music Systems and or JC, um, JCM's MS. And so this is the um, journal that's connected to the CSMC uh, conference. And then you have TISMIR, and this stands for uh, Transactions of the International Society of Music Information Retrieval. As you might guess, this uh, journal is connected with ISMIR. And so here you have really like the top papers uh, that kept published in the conference. And I mean, really like great research. So both of these uh, resources are really great if you are interested in um, AI music. Okay, so moving along, you can find uh, a lot of great papers about AI audio and music also at general AI conferences. And here I want to mention a couple that are just like outstanding. So ICML, so it's the main conference on machine learning and triple AI, another like big, big conference on artificial intelligence. And it wasn't probably the case uh, like in previous years, but uh, I've, I've seen this trend that like this general purpose AI conferences are um, kind of like getting a lot of uh, AI audio and music papers lately, which is great news for us in the field. Okay. So these were like conferences and formal kind of venues, but then there's another venue that's connected with that idea that I just mentioned earlier. That is, people are uh, researchers are publishing uh, their works um, or they're sharing their works before publishing them at conferences or in journals. An archive is the main place where this is happening. Uh, especially for computer science and artificial intelligence. So let me show you what Archive is. Probably you are familiar with this, but this is like a great website. And here you can find papers in a bunch of different fields. But uh, yeah, probably you'll be interested in this uh, field here. So computer science and down here you have artificial intelligence. So you can just like browse uh, among a gazillion uh, papers that are published every day here. So yeah, this once again is a great uh, resource to find uh, really uh, freshly baked uh, papers. Okay, now uh, there's also like another approach that you can use when you search for papers, right? So the, uh, and this approach goes like this. So you have like a topic in mind, uh, an area and you want to like uh, discover papers around that area. So how do you do that? Well, uh, luckily for us, we have Google Scholar. 
This is a search engine for academic and research papers, and it's just fantastic. So let me show you how it works. So here you have like, uh, it's kind of like familiar setting, right? With uh, the Google the search bar, but this is Google Scholar. And yeah, let's say like I want to search something about music summarization. And here like I just like get a lot of papers about music summarization, and then I can filter by ear. And if uh, the PDF is available then uh, of, of paper, then you're gonna have it here on the right hand side. So yeah, this is just like an amazing uh, search engine that you can use to do a lot of, uh, yeah, a good quality literature review for any topic you may have. Okay, so these are a little bit of the resources that I tend to use when I search for AI audio and music papers. Now, the final thing that I want to mention is, uh, yeah, something a little bit different and it's more like on the workflow. And it's basically like the way you organize your research and where you read stuff. And what I love doing is using um, a kind of like reference management, uh, reference management software uh, like Mendeley or Zotero. Now I'm just like mentioning this too because I'm familiar with them. I've used them over time and now I'm really keen on Mendeley. Um, this is like a great piece of software. So let me show you how this works. So here, you have, you can just like uh, organize all of your references and articles. So uh, here you can see that you can have like a bunch of like different folders. You can have, uh, I mean, different um, topics. And here, like inside these folders, you can put obviously like uh, a bunch of like articles and you'll have them here, right? And then the great thing about this um, application is that you can just read through uh, an article, you can highlight stuff that are interesting to you, or you can even add notes uh, like this. And yeah, this is just like a great software. You have also like search, um, a search bar like this. So if you search for something like Peach, you can search it uh, directly in an article or you can search it like a, at, at another level right here. And so basically you can uh, search throughout all of your um, library uh, of articles. And then just uh, the great thing about Mendeley is also that it organizes like your references. So it's, it's a very powerful, um, piece of software that it's going to definitely speed up the way you can read uh, a lot of papers and uh, digest them. By now you should have a good idea of how to filter out papers so that you can focus on the most promising ones. You should also be familiar with the venues where you can find interesting AI audio and music papers and you should have a good understanding of how you can speed up your reading process by using uh, a reference management software like Mendeley or Zotero. So that's it for this video and for this mini series. I hope you found it useful and if that's the case please consider subscribing and to hit the notification bell. I guess I'll see you next time. Cheers.